ready to get in the Word this morning? God is so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be talking about the power of our words. Um, I've had two conversations recently um, that went two different ways. I had one that was that was trusting God uh, for everything that His Word says, and I have one that was not trusting God. And I believe with all of my heart that we're going to see in Scripture today that if we will take His Word and if we'll apply it to our lives, but not just His Word, the things that we speak from our hearts, that there are things that the Lord will do. He'll bring blessing in our life as long as we do things His way. According to His Word, Proverbs Verse, I'm sorry, chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. I'm going to begin with this scripture, and then at the end, I'm going to end with this scripture. It says, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Have you, do you remember as a child ever saying sticks and stones? Remember that? Anybody remember the rest of it? Yes, six and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It's just not true. It's not true in your own life. It's not true in other people's lives. It's not true in your natural, physical life. It's not true in your spiritual life. And we're going to see, according to the Word of God, the words that we speak have the potential for great good or great harm in our lives and in other people's lives. Death and life are in the power of our tongue. Our words are very powerful. Our voice is very powerful. Our voice is a gift from the Lord. It's not just for musicians. It is a gift from the Lord for us to speak life. Our voices are meant to praise the Lord and to bring life into our situation. Last week, last week we, we talked about the importance of standing on the Word of God and, and believing the Word what it says, and taking it and applying it to our lives. I referenced Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, which says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. God said this to his children. He said, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he said what? Choose life. Like, I've set these before you. Both of these things are here. Both of these things are available. Both of these things you're going to have confrontation with. You get to choose. We choose death or life. These these words in Deuteronomy and the words in Proverbs 18, death and life is in the power of the tongue. I've set before you death and life. They're the same Hebrew words. Life means sustenance for living. It's the strength of to be alive, the strength to live spiritually, being alive spiritually. Death means plague. It's anything that's opposed to life. It brings death. So part of choosing life is not just by staying away from sin. Choosing life is not just in our actions and our deeds. Choosing life is also in the words that we speak. It is in the words that we speak. Death and life are in the power, the strength, the might, the power of the tongue. Matthew chapter 12, if you have your word, if you'll turn to Matthew chapter 12. And in just a few minutes, we're going to look at James chapter 3. So if you would like to mark those. Matthew chapter 12, beginning with verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you were evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. The evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you are justified, that means found innocent, and by your words... You will be condemned or found guilty. These were the words of Jesus. And he said, we will be known by the fruit that we bear. And our fruit is not just our deeds. Our fruit is also the words that we speak. 
the words that we speak. He says, you will know the tree by its fruit. You're going to know if someone's really a follower of Jesus, like really surrendered to Jesus by the words that come out of their mouth. If our words are condemning, if our words are judgmental, if our words are contrary to the word of God, like if he says as a child of God, these things should be in your life, or as a child of God, your life should look like this, and all we do is speak things that are negative to that or contrary to that, then those, things, those words are not coming from a heart that is set on the Lord. They're not coming from God. They're coming from the flesh. They're not spirit-led words. As the children of God, with the power of of, of death and life, it's in the tongue. It's in the tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So if we speak these words contrary to the word of God, we are speaking from a place that is flesh or that is ungodly, and it has to, to take its proper place in our life, and that is to be surrendered to God and then to be uprooted from our hearts and gotten out of our lives. Because if not, we are speaking spiritual death over our lives without even realizing it. Jesus said, you speak from the abundance of your heart. The abundance here, it literally means the overflow. It means what is left over. It's what remains. It's the things that spill over in your heart. So what he's really saying here is our words reflect what is going on in our heart. That when we're speaking, that we literally are reflecting the things that are going on in our heart. He says, and every tree is known by its fruit. The good from the good things that are in our heart. The bad from the bad things that we've, that we've stored in our heart. We know that our heart also represents a place where we store treasure. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Jesus said that. Where your treasure, hear me, treasure doesn't have to be a good thing. Treasure in this context just means a place where we tuck things away. Things that we store away. Do you know sometimes we store things away that should not be there? We store memories of the mind that have no place in the life of a believer. Sometimes we think when we read this, well, where your heart is, your treasure, we automatically think of money. Treasure is money. Treasure is value. Treasure is is goods. Treasure in this particular passage just means it's things that have been hidden away, things that have been stored away. It literally in the Greek means collected things stored away in a storehouse. It's those things that we tuck in our hearts, whether past or in our present life, whether good or Or even bad. It can be the things that you were labeled as a child. It can be the things that someone said to you that were so hurtful that we haven't been able to let go of. The things that have been tucked in our heart. We are going to know who we are as Christ followers because of the things that come out of our mouth. And the Lord says that that, 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 honestly, it's usually when the pressure is applied. When the pressure is applied, what comes out? That's when we need to really pay attention to our hearts, the condition of our heart. It's not just seen in our actions and our behavior. It is seen by our words. It's known by our words. We have the potential to build up or to tear down. We have the potential to instill confidence and encouragement or to breed insecurity and discouragement. Not just in other people's lives, but in our own soul by the words that we speak. And Jesus said, we're especially going to be held accountable on the day of judgment for the careless words that we spoke. This word careless, it means lazy, idle, thoughtless. Things that we go, oh, well, they, you know, that's not what I meant. Did it cause injury? Did it cause harm? It wasn't intentional. It was careless. Jesus said, we will give an account for every lazy, idle word that we speak. Those things that should not be in our mouths if we're Christians. Proverbs 10, 19, Solomon, the wisest man that ever walked the earth, he said this, In a multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips are wise. In a multitude of words, sin is not lacking. It's not missing. The one who restrains his lips lips is wise. Listen to the New Living Translation. You can't get any clearer than this. I almost chuckled when I read this. 
Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. That's pretty easy to understand. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. James chapter 3. If we could turn there, please. Hallelujah. Jesus. We're going to begin with that first verse. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that those who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human, no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. James said we all stumble at times with our words. All stumble. Because if not, we would be perfect, and we know the only perfect person that has ever walked the earth is Jesus. We would all, we all stumble at times. Sometimes that's maybe gossip. Sometimes that's foul language. Sometimes that's murmuring and complaining. Do we understand? It doesn't matter what it is in the Lord's eyes. It's all the same. We can't judge someone for foul language if we are going to walk around and, 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 and murmur and complain. We can't judge someone for murmuring and complaining when we're the ones that have a foul mouth. I mean, we can't. We can't. And so in, in God's eyes, it's all the same. Our words are powerful, and our words are meant to bring life into this earth and into, into to our situation and into our lives. The word is very clear that our tongue has great potential for good or for harm and even for devastation. It says the tongue, it stains the whole body, sets on fire the whole course of life, and is set on fire by hell, meaning by ungodly influences. The ungodly influences that are in our lives have the potential to sway our words. We have to be very careful what we allow to influence us. Have you ever noticed when you get around somebody who's gossiping, you have a tendency to just join right in the gossip? If you are around someone who's negative, you have the the tendency to become negative if we are not guarding what we know to be true and to be right. Our tongues are set on fire by hell, by ungodly influences in this world. We have to rely on the help of the Holy Spirit. We have to rely on the Word of God, like we talked about last week, taking the Word, speaking the Word into our lives more more than we have before. Applying it more than we ever have. Our words here, it says, it's like spreading deadly poison. Setting fire to our own lives or to the lives of others. Our words like spreading life or spreading poison. That's what God says. We can either spread life or we can spread poison. Our words direct the, they directly affect the quality of our life. You can say, well, that just doesn't make sense. There's a lot of things that don't make sense in the natural, but you know it in your heart that it is truth if you know Jesus. And what he is saying is that our words directly affect the quality of our life. 
in Proverbs and in James, both of these mention how easy it is to sin with our words. How easy it is to fall short with our words. Our harsh, unkind words, maybe it's lying, maybe it's slander, maybe it's gossip, maybe it's dirty jokes, maybe it's foul language. It's all listed as unwholesome talk. Whether it's murmuring, whether it's complaining, arguing, or disputing, it doesn't matter. The word calls it a restless evil. Restless evil, when we are speaking things that are contrary to the heart of God. The the scripture very clearly calls it a restless evil. Restless in the Greek is unstable, it's unsettled, it brings confusion and disorder. Hear me, when I looked this up in various commentaries, this is the example that was given for restless evil. An upheaval of politicals in the political sphere. I I immediately had this image of the White House on January the 6th of 2021. Everybody knows about that. The confusion, the disorder, all of these things. We have the potential to bring confusion and disorder with the words that we speak, or we have the potential to bring life and encouragement. It's very simple. The gospel is very simple, but it is very powerful for our lives and for the lives of people in our life. It is very, very simple. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. Be still. That doesn't mean, hey, do nothing and just trust me. Take your hands off and just trust me. No, but it does mean let your hands drop and trust me while you keep pursuing, while you keep praying, and while you keep speaking life. We cannot sit back and say, I trust you, God, but then out of the same mouth say, I don't know, God, but this, and complain about this, and fret about this, and worry about this. Scripture says if we want to move God by our faith, we've got to stand on his word, and we've got to speak life into our situations. Hear me, this is not name it and claim it stuff. I want to make that very clear. You can like who you like, you can listen to who you listen to. I don't listen to very many, I just don't have the time, to listen to, to different evangelists or whatever. I'm not talking about, I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm not saying that. I'm saying getting before God, listen, reading His Word, and what His Word says to do, then applying it to our lives. Just simply applying the Word of God. It's not a name and a claim it thing. Instead of us having a restless tongue that's full of deadly poison, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to make the choice to speak good, to make the choice to praise Him with our words. Our words praise Him when we speak life and when we spread the light of God and the love of God. It's praise. Praise is not just what we do on Sunday mornings in the church service. It is literally a a, a point of lifestyle in our words that we speak. A restless evil full of deadly poison. We cannot be ignorant, uneducated, unaware that the words that we speak are life and death. They are life and death. Spiritual life or spiritual death to our souls and to everyone around us. I want to ask you this. If you knew that in your home, in your car, in this room, in your workplace, if you knew that there was something there that had the potential to, 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 to break open and to spread a deadly gas, would you not handle it very carefully? Like if it was inside of your control and if you were responsible for it, would you not guard that thing? Be very careful. See, sometimes we, we just... We just say things without understanding the impact of what we're speaking into into our lives. Philippians chapter 2, 13 through 15, it says this, For it is God who works in you to will and to act on behalf of his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and disputing or complaining and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine as lights in the world. Paul said, for it is by God who works in you 
Like, we understand that God knows everything about our life. And whether it's his will that we are where we are or not, he works his purpose forth in our lives. He takes us right where we are, and he brings about his purpose through our lives. If we trust him for our salvation and our eternity, we have to trust that he's with us every step of the way. And God's word says it doesn't matter what is going on. He says it very clearly. Do everything without grumbling and complaining, arguing, so that you can be found blameless and pure. That's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. But we have the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, you can ask Him. God, help me when I start to go off track with my words. Help me. I'm telling you, He will. And then you'll have the choice. You can you'll, literally, I believe, with all of my heart, you will hear something in deep, deep in your soul say, you can say it or not say it. You better hold that thought. And you've got a choice then. Do you obey or do you not? Because the truth is, our words are supposed to bring life. Our words are supposed to bring light. Our words are a testimony to the world that Jesus is real and that he's alive. And when we, as the children of God or the church of God, are talking in a way that looks just like the world, no matter what we're saying, I'm not talking about curse words. I'm, I mean, those two. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about murmuring and complaining that the Lord talks about when we do this. And we all fall short. We just read it. We all stumble at times. But we have to get to a place where we realize the power of our words. The simple power of our words to people. To bring an encouraging word that uplifts their soul. How powerful it is. Our words serve as a testimony. He says they're like, they're shining as lights in the world. Our lives are supposed to shine as light to this very dark world. And if our words are hurtful towards others, or if we just don't think about it and don't understand the weight that our words carry, then we can damage someone else without ever realizing it. And the Lord says we will stand and we will give an account for that. This needs to be our prayer, Psalm 141, verse 3. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. And keep watch over my lips. Hear me. He will help you, but he will not do it. We have the control of the door, right? We get to choose. Proverbs 13, 13. He who guards his mouth protects his life, but the one who opens his lips invites his own ruin. It's our choice, Scripture says. He who guards his mouth protects his life. But the one who opens his mouth, he's not, he's just not, not talking about general conversation. He's talking about when we open our mouth and we speak things that are contrary to what it should be to the heart of God. Or hurtful things. If we do things that negate the word of God, we are inviting ruin into our lives. Proverbs twenty one twenty three: He who guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from distress. We want our soul, our mind, and our emotions not to be distressed. We have to guard the words we speak. We've got to understand our words are so powerful. So powerful. We have to choose our words very carefully. It's crucial that we learn to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us, to convict us when we start to say things that we don't need to say. It impacts the quality of our life, and it impacts the quality of our testimony. Our testimony. What does the world... How, do, how are we known? We read earlier, you'll know the tree by the fruit it produces. You'll know the tree. You'll know what's in the heart of a person based on the things that come out of their mouth. God has set before us life and death. Choose life. We stand on his word. We talked about it last week. We declare the word of God. We stand on it. We hold to it. And then we also have to choose our words carefully. Very carefully. A few weeks ago, the Holy Spirit spoke very powerfully in this room. And he said, rise up. 
and take what I've made available to you. I've said it last week. I'll say it again. This word is available to us. And it is sure. And there's not, you don't have to question it. It will not return void. It is life. And if he says it, and if he says this very simple gospel, is there is life and death in our mouth, then it is truth. Do you understand? I believe that's why people can be, somebody can be married to an unbeliever. And you don't have to preach at them all the time, but you can spread life in your home by the words you choose to speak, and they can see the love of God in you. We've seen it. We went to church with a woman years ago whose, whose husband, and I don't believe he's a believer even today, but he has told her very clearly, but I believe in God now. He hasn't surrendered to God, but he believes in God. Why? Not because she would preach at him, just because she would live the word and she would speak. She was very guarded with her words towards him. Rise up, take what I have. We need to use the word of God as our weapon of choice against our enemy, but we, use so, we also need to use it as our shield of faith. We need to speak the word of God as our shield of faith so that we can progress forward despite the enemy. Then finally, we need to use the word of God. We need to speak the word of God. We need to sow it as seeds so we're scattering truth in our life. So the things that we speak, we also need to incorporate speaking God's word into our life. And we are sowing seeds of truth into our heart. That is when we will begin to produce good fruit. Good fruit is not just, just kind words. Good fruit is, is life. It is the word of God as we begin to stand on it and speak it into our lives. Matthew, I'm going to ask if you and Jeremy will come up for just a minute. I don't need the whole worship team. I want to go back now. I want us to go back to this very first scripture that we read earlier, Proverbs chapter 18. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The words that we speak, whether good or whether bad, they are fruit. They are reflecting what is going on in our hearts. We said that, we know that, we've established that. This word stomach here, it literally means your conscious, your mind. The word is saying our mind is filled up with the words that we speak. Sometimes we read the word satisfied and we think of a good thing. Uh, Like when you go and you sit down at Thanksgiving dinner and you eat and you're like, oh man, I'm so satisfied. It's a good thing. But that's not what this is talking about. You can be satisfied, it just means to be filled up. Satisfied, whether you enjoyed it or not, you can be full. Sometimes we can be full of bad things. And that's what this is saying. Your stomach, representing your conscious, your mind, it is filled up with the words that we speak, whether good or whether bad. The produce, the words of our lips fill our lives. That is why it's so important we have to guard our heart above all else. Because out of it flows the issues of life. Because when we speak things into our lives, it should not be there. As we speak things, it fills our minds. And then our minds begin to turn. And our minds, what we think on for too long, will take root in our heart. And then it comes out in our life. Not just in behaviors, but it comes out in our words. I can tell you what you've been focused on by the words coming out of your mouth. We can tell. You can tell. I can tell myself when I'm not in a good, like people like to say, I'm not in a good headspace. Whatever you want to call it. The words that are coming out of your mouth. You'll know then. God, am I standing on your word? Am I where I need to be with you? Am I surrendered to you? Am I trusting you? Because if your words are everywhere else, if they're doubt, if they're fear, if they're worry, if they're murmuring, if they're complaining, if they're they're heathen like the world then we have to take take a step back and go, my soul is not prospering right now. 
my mind and my emotions cannot be prospering right now because my, my words look more like the world than they do Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I want you to have life and life to the fullest. But some of it is the words that you choose to speak. Speaking his word and just speaking life. Choosing not to use, not to say things we shouldn't say. Choosing not to tear down, but choosing to build up. Choosing not to bring discouragement, but to bring encouragement. It's not a false hope. It's living the word of God. It is living the word of God. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said this. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The word of God is our spiritual nourishment, our spiritual sustenance. We need it. We speak it into our lives. But it also says in Psalm 119, 11, I have stored up, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I won't sin against you. We hide the word of God. It's our treasure. We tuck it away in our hearts so that we don't sin against God. Isn't it great to have Robert back today? We love you, Robert. I can guarantee you he's full of the Word of God right now, aren't you? He just graduated Teen Challenge, the third level. And I'm telling you, I'm sure he is full of the Word of God. And he's been taught you have to store it up in your life because what comes out of you is going to reflect what's going on in your heart. We have to, we, we have the choice. Are we going to speak life or speak death? Are we going to speak blessing or are we going to speak cursing? Because according to Scripture, both shouldn't be in there. We make a choice. Jesus said this in Matthew 15, 18. He said, it's what comes out of your mouth that defiles us, not what goes in. To defile, it literally means to violate what is sacred. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We, if you have Jesus in your heart, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. What comes out of your mouth is what violates the temple. That's what Jesus said. So if we want the life that he said we can have, we have to choose not to allow things that come out that should not come out of a believer. I'm not saying you can't find somebody to talk to and you can't find somebody to, 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 to vent to, but don't. But you know what I'm saying. You need a prayer partner, not a pity partner. You don't need to just have somebody that you can just go and unload on. You need to have somebody who's going to say, I hear what you're saying, but that's not according to the word. You got to have somebody who loves you enough to speak the truth into your life. That'll say, you know, you can't keep talking like this because you're just bringing death, spiritual death into your life. You're sowing seeds of spiritual death. Like you're not sowing seeds of life. You got to speak differently. You got to, how do you do that? Because you believe his word. I've said this before. Find you a verse. Find you one verse. If it's the only verse you have for the whole month, you just meditate on that verse. Get it in you. Believe it. Jesus said it's what comes out of our mouth that defiles us, that, 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 that damages, that distorts the truth in our lives. We have to be very aware of our influence. We have to be very aware of our words. From the treasure that is stored up in our heart. What is stored in our heart? Because I believe there are some that you probably had things spoken over you from the time you were a child. And you've taken those words and you've tucked them. And I believe with all my heart, the Lord wants to remove those things from you. He wants to speak a better word. He doesn't want you wearing a label that he did not put on you. He calls you redeemed if you belong to Jesus. He doesn't call you an addict or a failure. So we have to be careful that we don't call ourselves that. We don't call ourselves things that are contrary to the Word of God. So who has He created you to be? 
You're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. That's what he says. Join heirs with Jesus. <laughs> Will you bow your heads for a moment? see this as two two ways one is not the words that you speak but the words that have been spoken over you maybe from your childhood maybe from a past marriage maybe from a boss at work But the words that have been spoken over you have have had a bigger grip than they need to. They've been tucked away in our heart. And the Lord today, I believe, wants to provide healing in that space. If you will surrender that to Him, I believe that, I believe, I believe, I know He will meet you where you are. And remove that label off of your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you've seen every hand that was raised. You know the labels, oh God. You know the things that have been spoken. Lord, that bring hurt and discouragement and defeat and despair in our lives. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would administer healing to these places. Lord, I I pray you give them the strength to release this in your name. And in order to do so, that they release forgiveness to whomever said those words over them so that they can be free in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who've gotten into a habit of saying things that they know, God, are not you. I pray that you just by your love, oh God, that your your gentle, loving compassion, that right now you would minister to their heart. Help them to see themselves as you see them, oh Lord. I pray that they learn to to rely on the Holy Spirit to help them, but that they would realize they have a choice in the words that they say. And I pray, oh God, that as they begin to to shift and change the way they, they speak, I pray that they would see life come, oh God, your life come into their life, come into their hearts. Lord, spring forth in every area of their life as they simply apply your word. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. You you reminded me in heart, God, of something you shared with me years ago. For those that struggle with words spoken over them. Father, you remember years ago I struggled with my dad. He was lost. He didn't know you. and He didn't didn't know how to build life into me. You taught me that he can't give what he doesn't have. And Lord, in in all the lives in here that have been impacted by by voices that have been spoken over them, God, from, from people that just don't know you. Lord, if they knew you, they never would have said the things they said. Their cups were empty, and they had nothing to give, and hurt people hurt people. And Lord, I thank you that the power of those words has nothing to do 
with who your sons and daughters are in this room. And right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you that you, you remove the power of words spoken over people that have no right to chain them to an identity that you didn't give them. Lord, in your word, you call us to put off and to put on, to put off things that we were never intended for. And I thank you today, but by faith, God, the word spoken, the cages that people have been resident in for all of these times, God, by words that are, are like vapor and have no power over them, God, all of that fades today. And the words that you speak, God, become who they are. You call us all sons and daughters, God. Your word in Colossians 1 says that we are holy and righteous and above reproach in your sight. Not because of what we've done, but because what Jesus did is just that amazing. And the power of your blood puts us in that position. So Lord, I just pray, God, in this brief time, as only you can, Lord, by the word of God and by the spirit of truth, let people be set free, God, from wrong interpretations of who they are. And thank you that their eyes become all the more open today to who you say they are and help them to begin to speak what you say and to take on that identity. And I thank you, Lord, that you help us from this point forward to distinguish, oh God, that which is good and right and pure when we begin to speak it and that which isn't. Lord, soften our hearts, God, and in our ears to hear more clearly, Lord, from you so that we speak no longer things that bring pain and destruction, God. Help, them, help those things to be removed from our hearts, God, that so, so that we can really be harmless and blameless as you've called us to be. In many situations, God, you call us to be the answer to people that need you. Give us the strength and the anointing to do that, God. So, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the testimonies of, of healing in this room. Thank you for new life. Thank you for, Lord, again, through the gifts of the spirits, beckoning us to draw near to you, to step up and to receive what you have for us. Thank you for the admonishment, God, to, to put away the things of the flesh. Because you've got a life that's waiting for us that's amazing, God. Help us to overcome those things and just draw near to you, Lord. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.